My name is Courtney Bagby Lupillen, and I just had an amazing conversation with the real Jason Duncan on the Root of All Success podcast. Tune in to hear me talk all about influencer management and social media partnerships. Welcome to the Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan, a podcast that explores how the world's most powerful entrepreneurs unlocked success and how their stories can help you do the same. A successful educator turned entrepreneur, Jason has built multi-million dollar businesses that have been featured in Inc. Magazine and Entrepreneur Magazine. His life's mission now is helping entrepreneurs live what he calls hashtag the exit lifestyle. Introducing TEDx speaker, mastermind leader, author, entrepreneur, cigar aficionado, motorcycle enthusiast, and host of the root of all success, the real Jason Duncan. The real Jason Duncan. Welcome back to another edition of the show. I have a wonderful guest for us to talk about today. And I love it when I have successful female entrepreneurs on the show, because frankly, over 214 episodes, I have had many more men on the show than I have had women. And so it's always nice to have successful women on the show. So for all you ladies out there who listen to the show or looking for some inspiration from other successful entrepreneur ladies, well, here you go. You got one today with Courtney bagby lupillen and i had to practice saying her name uh, because last time i talked to her she wasn't married and so she's got this lupillen is a new name and it's all 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 together is hard to say but i'm really glad courtney's here she is the ceo and founder of a company called little red management Uh, she's based out of la and what she is is a talent manager for reality tv shows so she's worked on franchises like the bachelor franchise big brother Uh, Love is Blind, The Circle. And so she was a fangirl who turned that fangirl idea into a business. And so she began her career at Oracle in San Francisco. She was managing internal communications and events. And then she's like, well, hey, I like working with celebrities and influencers. And so she, she went to L.A. and went a little south of San Francisco, went to L.A., where she hustled. And she figured out how to create the relationships in the reality TV world. And in 2019, at the ripe young age of 25, she started Little Red Management. And now she is uh, she's has a big proclivity for helping pop culture and and helping people interact with that. So if you've watched if you're watching stuff on broadcast television, which is where most of the stuff appears first, and then you got streaming and you're into the reality stuff, you've probably seen people that Courtney has worked with. So. Uh, she's already worked with brands like Disney, Fox, Hallmark, Nike, Adidas, Amazon, Dove, Lancome. So she's she's been around. I mean, and she's still young, and she's got a many, many, many more amazingly successful years ahead of her. And I'm honored to have her on the root of all success today. Courtney, welcome to the show. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. You just made me sound so amazing. So I appreciate <laughs> that so much. Well, if you're working in the reality TV show world, you know that it's all about presentation, isn't it? It's all that. Isn't that what reality TV is about the presentation? Because if you just filmed somebody doing something normal in their real life, that's not interesting. But if you present it correctly, it becomes interesting, right? Well, yeah. And to be honest, um, kind of back when I started, you know, the, the reality TV people are kind of the ones that got a social media following compared to like actors and actresses because people wanted to follow them post show right and see like their reality on social media so that's sort of why I was always super into the reality side of things too because I like felt like I knew them right I felt like they were like my best friends and I needed to follow them after they were on The Bachelor right to like continue watching their love story or whatever it may be so what was your first reality tv show that you remember watching and knowing oh okay this is kind of cool so I feel like The Bachelor is for sure like notorious, like my have been my favorite show probably for embarrassing, right? To say this probably for like 15 years now. Um, I'm 30 now. So I mean, I probably watched, started watching it in high school and that was sort of the first show I was into. Like I never watched Vanderpump or Real World or I'm trying to think what else was popular even when I was like in high school, Jersey Shore maybe. 
but I was always the bachelor girl, I guess, that that would host watch parties and all. Well, would you be surprised to know that I have never seen a single episode of The Bachelor? That is, I mean, it's just shocking to me because I feel like everyone, like, I don't know, like, my husband's, like, forced to watch it. You know what I mean? Like, and I feel like, and he was telling me, he was like, I've been, like, we were talking about this, I think, literally two days ago in the car. He was like, I was forced to watch it, like, with my mom. Like, it was just on growing up. So she just knew. And it was, like, because we were talking about, she was like, oh, he, um, his sister is, I guess, dating someone. And he was, like, watching The Bachelor and, like, excited to come over and watch it with her. And I was like, what guy, like, volunteers to, like, come watch The Bachelor with you? And he was like, well, babe, like, I I watched it growing up. Like, maybe he just, like, actually, like, his mom forced him to watch it with him. So that is kind Um, of surprising. Yeah, well, I never, never. uh, um, And not only have I not watched it, I have not even been interested in watching it. I guess it's just not my thing. I'm trying to think about reality shows. I I, I remember when The Real World came out, which probably on MTV was probably, if not the first, one of the first reality shows that came out. Yeah. And one of the guys on the show was from uh, a little town in Kentucky, which is not far from Nashville. And I don't remember... I don't know why I even remembered that. I haven't thought about that in years, but, but that was kind of a connection. And then I remember when survivor came out, golly, 25 years ago. Yeah. That was and, my favorite. You know, I, I, I watched that a couple of times. Um, but then that turned into just in my, you know, like from the casual observer, this is just a conniving, lying, backstabbing all like, that's what it is. And I'm like, I'm not interested. This doesn't interest. Did you me ever, anymore. did you ever watch big brother? Because now it's worse than Survivor. No. At least Survivor no. was more like game, I feel like. No, I, I, you know, and Courtney, that's that's the thing. It's like, here you are. You're the professional in the management of the personalities that are on these shows. And I don't like them. Like, I don't, Wait, so, okay. I don't but I'm do not interested you, in them. Do you watch TV? Like, are you a sports guy? Or what's I like, watch... what's sort of your thing? You know what I mean? Like, my hobby and like what I do in my spare time is like, I want to watch the newest reality TV show, you know? Yeah. No, I, I don't watch a lot of TV. We haven't had cable television in quite some time, but that's not yeah, news. Either. A lot of yeah. people are not without that. But, but I like recently right now I am watching Joe Pickett on Paramount plus and nobody okay. knows about this show and everybody's missing. It's so fantastic, but I don't, I I'll have to tell my reality. husband. I feel like he's into that stuff that yeah, no one well, else knows. Like, I, we, we we watched uh, Yellowstone. We liked Yellowstone. Okay. And then that kind of went off the rails. I think everybody in the Yellowstone cast is all arguing with each other. So I don't know if they're coming out. But, but we watched that. So this show, Joe Pickett, is he's a game warden in Wyoming. It's it's not produced by the same people. It's di- completely different. But it has that same kind of sense and feel. Okay. But it's not as dark. But it's really good. And I, I'm, Wait, I'm Jason, this- where are you from? I'm Nashville. Okay. Because I was yeah. like... I feel like that also kind of depends, like, sort of what TV shows you're into, in in yeah. a way. So that's interesting. Yeah, I don't. You know, if I if I'm watching anything on television, we have just like everybody else, we have smart television. So I'll sit down and I'll turn on the TV, and we use Roku, which I love Roku, uh, and I'll go to YouTube and I watch. Yeah. I watch YouTube yeah, videos, and that's that too. you know I watch yeah. cars and mo- motorcycles. So that's kind of reality, but not not reality um i'm trying to think i'm, I'm, I'm i was gonna say did you sake. try to think about what, what, did you try what um like? formula one right or is it just called f1 like but it was like a reality tv show i think on netflix about like Never formula thought. one and i've heard it's great so maybe you'd no. like that i'm like i'm gonna be about to get you into reality tv <laughs> <laughs> well i'm trying to think of which reality show i watched that was that was like real well none of it's real but you know what i mean but it was it, it it's uh like i like fear factor although that was oh, a that game was show but it was also kind of the joe rogan's first yeah. appearance on television back yeah. in the day that was fun um golly i can't think about what reality shows because i'm sure i watch one or two. Oh, the amazing race i don't know yeah. if that's a reality show but yeah that was no it cool. is yeah and some people like some of my clients were on that because they were on like big brother first and then went on Amazing Race. Well, it's funny about Amazing Race. I know you manage the talent, so maybe you can get me on that show. But yeah. I, I wanted to. Yeah, let, brother, let's try. 
Well, my brother and I wanted to do it. We had talked about it. He's three years younger than me. And this was, God, this is probably 10 years ago. But we were talking about, hey, let's try to get on Amazing Race. Wait, you should brother. literally, like, I because I have a contact there. I wonder if she still does Amazing Race. But literally, I will let you know. I would love to do it. But here's why we I'm didn't putting it in my calendar. <laughs> well, we didn't apply the year that w- we were going to do the applications they were doing family and we thought okay this is cool we're brothers uh-huh. they said, it has to be four people from the family and i'm like wait no, I'm oh because did they have one where it was four people or did they just want to interview four people and maybe pick two to bring on maybe i don't i think they did a family of four like it was Cut four out. family members like two couples or yeah. some, you know brothers-in-law and that type of thing but but we were looking at this thinking I'm not letting my wife. No, my wife is not coming. His wife is See, not coming. We would is, kill each other. Does your wife watch any reality or no? No, she and I are very similar. She she watches old reruns of like um, Housewives. <laughs> I was gonna no, say I don't know. No, she watches. What's her show? What's uh, Raymond? Everybody loves Raymond. Like that. She watches that all okay. the time. Okay, she's so watched like, every like, show a hundred times. Okay, so more like comedy sitcom stuff. Yeah, that's probably guess, right? more of our stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, at least I guess you guys don't follow any of my people on social media. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, but what's interesting about your story, though, is that you took this, your mom starts making you watch this show at 50, you're not making you, but like you're, you're. No, you're yeah. I, honestly, I don't think she let me at first, actually. So I think well, I would just watch it with my sister, and- probably. But now you make a living at this yeah. and you're successful at this and you're working with huge brands and huge yeah. franchises in the TV world. How in the world did that happen? How did, what did you do? Oh my God. Well, I slid into people's DMs. <laughs> That's my favorite thing to say because it's true. Um, but no, I mean, I, I would really reach out to people and sort of offer to help any way I could. Like, you know, I would ask them if I could help them with their website or do their media kit or just any any way that I could help them and volunteer my time is sort of how I, like, got in with a few people. Um, I even, like, at first volunteered for an event. Like, it was, like, a nonprofit that held an event every year for reality TV people. And so I, like, volunteered with that nonprofit to, like, have the opportunity to like meet all the reality stars. So like then I would kind of just start asking people like, okay, like how do sponsorships work? And like I did study advertising and know that this is like what I wanted to do, but it's more like, okay, how can I do it now? You know? So I would like ask, I was like, oh, so like how much do you get paid for an Instagram post? And I remember like one of my clients now today had like 10,000 followers at the time. She's like, oh, I got paid 250 bucks for this. And I was like, oh my God, that's so cool. You know, like back in the day and now I'm doing like $25,000 posts, you know, but, um, back, like I would, I would volunteer for a podcast. I started like a Facebook group for a podcast that I really loved. Um, and, and kind of got in with those girls, those hosts. Um, and honestly, like I ended up working at a talent agency for a year when I first moved here, Jason, And they worked with a lot of actors and actresses, but I was able to like still learn how partnerships worked, right? And negotiations and all that. And they actually didn't want to like work with reality TV stars. And like, that's what I wanted to do. So after a year I left and started my own company. And I think I had like maybe five to 10 influencers, reality stars that I could pitch and get brand deals for. And then it kind of grew from there by like word of mouth or like me reaching out to people. And yeah, I mean, that's almost like five years ago now. So your brand, so your business, little, little red management is, is the business model. You're just going to these TV store, these reality TV stars and helping them get brand deals. That's what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. And mostly, I mean, reaching out to the brands to find partnerships for them, you know? So like, once I bring them on and start managing them, I mean, that's what's called like managing their brand partnerships, et cetera. Then I reach out to brands all day. I mean, it's a total sales job, really. And I'm reaching out to brands all day and like trying to get them partnerships or trying to see who's doing something for the Super Bowl. And then I kind of send them their, my five clients that are going to the Super Bowl, you know? Um, and then they'll kind of come back and be like, oh, we're interested in working with this couple or whatever for a Bud Light campaign. And 
that I sort of am negotiating that. And um, yeah, I mean, that's kind of, that's sort of my like day to day is like reaching out to brands and, and, and I feel like for the most part, like I work with the same talent now, like, yeah, I'll have a new client like once every month, but really I'm like not really bringing on new talent most of the time. Like I'm just sort of working and building on the people that I do work with now. Is it exclusively reality TV stars or is it more than that? I do have like a couple foodies, like recipe girlies. Um, I have a couple YouTubers, um, but I would say for the majority, like most of my clients are reality TV. Let's take a quick break to thank our amazing sponsors for making this podcast possible. As an entrepreneur, I know that you have to deal with sales on a regular basis. I mean, every entrepreneur does. And if you aren't paying attention to sales as an entrepreneur, you're not going to be an entrepreneur for very long. But I've got a sponsor of this show called Dub that helps you bring the personal back to sales. If you want to figure out how to improve content creation, improve client trust, uh, improve your sales process, decrease the sales cycle, because we all know time kills deals. If you want to increase client bookings and increase conversions, you need to take a look at Dub. There's a special offer for Dub for listeners to the Root of All Success at therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub, and that's D-U-B-B. What Dub does, I've been using this for years. I'm a huge fan, and I'm so honored that they're our uh, primary sponsor of the podcast, but they have helped over 60,000 businesses around the world communicate better, to make sales easier, to make sales more personal. And it's built, Dub is built for growing teams. I mean, you can set up video emails, you can set up custom onboarding, you can do admin reporting, uh, anything you need around video and sales and automation, Dub is there. You can try Dub now. Your conversions to sales are waiting. All you got to do is go to therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. And there you're going to get two weeks for free to try Dub. Plus, you're going to get 50% off your first two months of Dub. You can't can't beat that. So go check it out. Go to therealjasonduncan.com slash Dub. Thanks for listening to our sponsors. Now, back to the show. All right. So what we need to do is figure out how to get a business coach, author, and podcaster into your into your portfolio. What do you think? Yeah, we can do it. <laughs> I mean, look, Jason, there are some, like, you almost need someone for everything. Like, someone asked me for, God, what was it even called? It was the funniest thing that it was, like, an influencer that made, like, animation houses or so, houses together, and they, like, film it a certain way where it looks like it's kind of moving <laughs> like up, like I don't know how to explain it but it was like there's there's an influencer for everything and I think that they're constantly trying to ask me for you know different they're constantly trying to ask me for different creators and like if I don't have anyone it kind of sucks right but at the same time and like that and that's where I think relationships come into play because I'm like oh that person could be good you know but yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's always, I think there's a niche for everything. It's just like, for me, I found that my most successful clients are from reality TV and it's probably because of the brand partnerships and relationships that I have too, you know? Yeah. And those are the ones that book reality TV stars. So have you been able to, and I would imagine the answer to this is yes, but have you been able to develop relationships with some of the people that you used to watch as a fan? Yeah. It's the weirdest thing. Like, I, so I actually like one girl that I was like the biggest fan of, um, I started working with her kind of like early in my career, I helped her on her podcast and like, she actually like married my husband and I, um, and she was like our officiant at the wedding and everyone was like, I mean, you know, it was just like on brand for me. Cause I've been like obsessed with her since I was 20, you know? And then like, now I'm able to like call her a friend. Isn't that surreal? And and I think all of us as entrepreneurs, you know, no matter what brand we're trying to build or business we're trying to build or what industry we're in, is that we have this vision of what we want to accomplish. And and then we end up accomplishing that and it may be even more than that. And we have this pinch ourselves moment like, is this really life? Am I really 
doing this? Do I really own a company that employs this many people? Do I really have a relationship with this person that I used to be a fan girl of? Like, isn't, well, it, it's, isn't it's, that the cool thing? I feel like it's so cool, but it's weird because it's like you don't really have that many moments to like stop and realize that, you know, and like really think like, oh, my God, I can't believe that I'm here, you know, with this person or I can't believe that I'm out with someone and someone else is going up to my client to ask for a photo. Like, that's my favorite moments because, like, I'm totally that fangirl that, like, went up to everyone that I would see at the Grove and honestly still kind of do. Like, I still will be that person that will, like, go up to a celebrity and, like, go ask them for a photo. So when I'm with one of my clients and someone does that, it, that's, like, I feel like the most surreal moments is when I'm, like, oh, my God, like, someone else is, like, a fangirl of my client and I used to like, you know, look at Justin Bieber's manager and be like, that's so cool that he gets to hang out with him all the time. Not that it's like, you know, the same, but kind of. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. Well, you can tell, I can get, I just sense in your, your, uh, your giddiness about this is that you, you have a really deep love and passion for what you're able to accomplish and what you're doing in your business. So tell me a little bit about the success metrics that you've used to determine, Hey, this is actually working and I'm doing well and I'm successful. Can you go back five years ago when you started this thing to where it is yeah. now, what metrics you were able to hit and go, Oh, I'm actually successful at this. This is pretty cool. Yeah. So I feel like the, I feel like the biggest thing, like, especially when I was starting was just like ensuring, are you still there? Yeah, and and we'll just interrupt just for a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah, and then we I had, can kind of turn on low data mode. I turned it on low data mode. The internet for some reason on one of our sides is is lagging, but it's all good. It's still recording a high high definition, so no worries. And listeners, if you're still hearing this, sorry about our little internal dialogue, but carry on, Courtney. It's all good. Okay, cool. So um, I need to think. Okay, so looking back at like when I started, I think the number one like metric that I was really creating was like, am I making the same amount of money that I was making when I was working at the talent agency, if not more, you know, like my goal was to like make this essentially the same amount, right? Because then I'm not losing anything. Um, and then I think like over the years, it's more been like, it's not even me noticing, it's more like me sending it to my dad and my dad being like, okay, we need to get like some, make sure that your accounting is good. Like we need to make sure that you have a bookkeeper, <laughs> like the comments like that, that are just like more telling that like what I'm doing is actually making money and that I'm actually becoming successful. If that makes sense. So, well, so what do you, what do you think has been the keys to you being so successful? I mean, to be able to work with brands, like I mentioned at the opening, you know, you've got Disney, Fox, Hallmark, Nike, Adidas, Amazon, Dove, Lancome. We named those at the beginning. I named those again. You've now got relationships with these people and you're calling and they're, they're wanting brand deals with some yeah. of the people that you are connecting them. What is your key? If you had to narrow it down, like this has been the thing that's allowed me to be successful. What would you say that is? Okay. So definitely persistence. That's probably the number one thing that has got me to where I am today. Like I don't, I don't give up in reaching out to people like talent that I want to work with. I don't give up on that. I don't give up on reaching out to the brands for my clients, right. To like make those partnerships work. Um, and I think that that's like the number one key to success is like, you can't be nervous just because someone says no to me doesn't mean that I don't keep trying, you know, and you can't be scared of that. Like I'm, I'm rejected all the time, right. Like from brands and it's like, it doesn't stop me from reaching out to 30 others. Like if you reach out to 50 brands, you might only get one response and that's what's going to happen. You can't like feel defeated because of that. And I think that that happens with a lot of people. Yeah. Well, persistence, I think is a key for, for every entrepreneur. If you're going to be successful, mm -hmm. you have to be persistent. If you give up at the first sign of failure, well, you're not ever going to make it. So what do you, how does, how does Courtney define the word success to you? What does that mean? Honestly, if you're doing something that, like, I think success means that you're doing something that you love to do and you're making money that can create a good living for you, you know, like that you can go to that five star resort in Hawaii and stay there for five nights and that's no problem, you know, like that's success to me. Like 
And, and also that you're just like happy with what you do and you're happy in your life too. Like, I think that, you know, I work so much as an entrepreneur. I'm working from the second that I wake up to the second I go to bed. Um, and also honestly kind of on the weekends and like, you have to be able to also be like, have a good, um, work-life balance and like be successful in your own relationships too, outside of work, you know? Cause I think you can be very successful at work, but like not have a life. Right. And like not be in a good relationship and have all those other things too. So with that definition of success, which is doing something you love and making money at it, do you consider yourself to be successful? I mean, I'd like to say, Jason, because you said that when we first started the podcast that I guess I can say that I am, um, but, um, no, I, I mean, I, it's weird because I don't like saying that I am myself. Like, I don't like being like, yeah, I'm successful to people. Like that's sometimes people get jealous of that and it's not always like a great thing. I think sometimes to, to yeah. flaunt that. Right. But I think in terms of like, having a great relationship and having a great business that I have amazing employees and do make a good living off of, I think I can consider myself successful. It's just like weird to say, I guess. And why you is that, to, Jason? You know, you need to, you got to embrace it. I mean, I guess so, it. but I'm not going to go around good. being like in my Instagram bio, successful entrepreneur. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not about <laughs> It's not a matter of, of, of announcing it. It's knowing that it is because success means achieving that which you attended, intended to achieve. So for you, yeah. you intended to achieve a, a business that paid enough money for you to live the life that you want to live. Once you've done that, that's success. Now, you may change that, change the marker. Like you may yeah. say later, well, you know, actually when you have, because I know you're pregnant, congratulations. So when you Thank have you. your baby... And your definition of success and what you want to achieve may change a little bit. And then when you achieve that, that, so success markers move for everybody. And that's why I love this show is I get to talk to hundreds of entrepreneurs and they all have different definitions of success and what they're trying to achieve. Um, so embrace it. You, you are yeah. successful based on your definition. Yeah. And I think like, you're totally right. Like I think every, every week, even I have like a new goal. Right. And if I can make that goal or meet that goal or your marker or whatever it is, then I feel like I succeeded in that week. Right. Or like, like my clients are going to Super Bowl. I, my job is to get them a deal. If I got that deal for them, I succeeded, you know? Um, and actually, that's what's cool about my job for the most part is like every deal that I get, like we can call that like a success. Right. Um, if it's one that I'm excited about, I feel like. But yeah, that's true. Well, I, I think, you, I think you should embrace it because comparison is the thief of joy. If we look at other people's definition of success and we say, okay, well, if I don't have $10 million in the bank, I'm not successful. Cause that's what so-and-so says is success. That comparison will rob you of the joy of achieving the things you want to achieve because you know what your definition of success may only require $200,000 a year in income where another person's definition may require $2 million. Another person may say, look, if I, as long as I'm making 20 grand, I'm good. No, so, like lit literally, that's what I hear all the time. And I'm like, really? That's like what you consider? Like, you know, I mean, but everyone has a difference. Well, I was talking to a, a client of mine just over the last couple of days, and he's, he, he is successful in what you would consider the general ideas of success in terms of finance and running businesses. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to give away. I don't want to tell what state he lives in or where he is because I don't want to yeah. give it away. But but he lives in a, a small town in a southern state. And I said, do you, you realize, and I told him, I said, do you realize that you are the top 1% of this entire region in terms of finances? And he looked at me, he's like, what? And, and he goes, I said, yes, you look at how much money you, your company brought in last year and how much money you're able to put on your, in your bank account that puts you in the top 1% of this region, top 5% United States. And he was, he was blown away by that. And, and I think. He didn't have that yeah. awareness. So for all of us, I think we need to look at what, what are we aware, what are we are trying to achieve? And then what have we achieved and where does that put us well, in relationship to other people? And that's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like until you kind of stop and think like, oh my God, I'm working with these people or like, oh my God, I'm making this. Like, 
you're not thinking that on a daily basis. You're just thinking, and, and I think every entrepreneur would say this, you're just thinking like, what more can I be doing? You know, like, like you're not thinking about, oh, like what all the good things you've been doing or, or how great you've been. It's more like, what more can I do? You know? And that's honestly, like, I think, again, every entrepreneur out there is constantly thinking that. So let's talk to those entrepreneurs that are listening to the show. And I want them to hear from you, somebody who did it. You're still relatively young. You, you, you just relatively, that's five. scary. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, scary. Listen, uh, you started at 25, you're 30. Now you've got a very successful company in a space that is continuing to grow and thrive because brand deals aren't going away. Like this is how people are making money now. Um, so what is your piece of advice? So I want you to speak directly to the listeners. What advice would you give? And you can't tell them to be persistent. We already talked about that. So you got to come up with something different. What is, what is this one piece of advice that you would say, this is what you guys should do. Okay. So I'm going to say two things. Okay. My first piece of advice is create, a list of what, what, like the top thing is, is like what you actually want to do. Okay. And then you need to figure out what you need to do in order to get to that thing. And, and then do it, like just do it. <laughs> and like, don't keep talking about the thing, start doing the thing. Because I feel like that's the number one thing that bugs me when people start talking to me about wanting to become an entrepreneur is all the things that they want to do or these goals that they have yet they haven't done anything to do them and you're not going to be able to do anything without actually like having those steps and like doing it if that makes sense well i think it's very practical and yes it makes sense it's, it's <laughs> Cause that's how i am i'm like do? i don't stop now, talking what are like, you gonna have to do to stop talking that? about what are you it? gonna have to do to make that real yeah yeah because I think people just sit there and talk about their goals for five years about what they want to do. And you have to figure out like, okay, well, how do, can I actually make that a reality? Yeah. Stop talking about it. Go do yes. it. Yes. Yes. <laughs> That's Courtney, with most things you... I think in life, to be honest. Well, sure. For sure. <laughs> stop talking about it. Go do it. So I want to give you the final word today on the show. As we close out this show, the root of all success uh, I want to give you the final word. You can say anything you want about what we've talked about. You can give yeah. advice. You can tell a joke. You you get the final word. Um, honestly, my favorite thing that I feel like I always say <laughs> um, is like, never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game because you cannot be scared to start what you want to start. As long as you have, make sure that you have the resources or you can find those resources and just make it happen. Don't fear striking out. Well, Courtney, thank you so it's much for favorite. being on the show. <laughs> it's been awesome having the conversations very, very lively. And I, I appreciate it very much. Um, I want to tell everybody to go follow Courtney. So go check her out. LittleRedManagement.com. Little Red Management. You can see her site, her website, all the companies that she's working with. And if you're an influencer, you're wanting to get in the reality TV space or you've got a company where you're looking to connect with influencers, this might be the person that you need to talk to. If you want to follow her on Instagram, she is at Instagram.com slash Courtney. And that's C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y because I know there's lots of ways to spell that. Courtney Lup Lupillin. I'm going to yep, say it right. you said I'll it. it for you. I'm going to spell it because you're going to get it wrong. It's L-U-P-I-L-I-N, right? L-U-P-I-L-I-N. Yes. Yeah, so Courtney Lupillin on Instagram and she's Courtney Bagby on uh, Twitter or X, I guess it's X now. I, I'm not still not used to calling that and LinkedIn. Yeah, you can go check her out. But, but again, big thanks to Courtney. And I, I want to, I want to reiterate something that she said uh, as we're talking about, don't let the fear of striking out, keep you from getting in the game. You as an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur are listening to the show for a reason, whether it's just killing time, whether it's whatever it is, but there's probably a reason behind it to say, I want to be inspired. I want to hear something about entrepreneurship. That'll make me go do something great in this world. Take, advice from Courtney. Look what she did. She turned her fangirl ideas into a, a business that is creating enough income for her and her family to live the type of lifestyle that she wants. And you can do the same thing. So make sure that you tune in again next week when I talk with yet another very successful entrepreneur about his or her journey to success. And as always, until then, I am the real Jason Duncan and Jesus is King. Attention business owners. Attention business owners. Feeling burnout from running your business? 
Uncertain if you're nearing burnout? Take our free 10-question business burnout test at businessburnouttest.com to discover where you stand. With just 10 quick questions, you'll learn how to immediately begin making changes to regain freedom and success. Cut your daily operations time in half. Improve your quality of life and prepare your business for your future exit without losing revenue or profit. Visit businessburnouttest.com now and take the test. Thank you for listening to another edition of The Root of All Success with the real Jason Duncan. If you've enjoyed this week's episode, visit therootofallsuccess.com to access the show notes and other helpful resources. Follow Jason on social media at The Real Jason Duncan. See you again next time here on The Root of All Success. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.